Good morning, folks. Uh, here we are at the, uh, I think it's called the 60, because it's on Route 60 in Texas, RV park. It's in uh, Bay City, Texas. Beautiful sunrise coming up here Sunday morning. We had a answer to prayers and a lot of good information came out on a couple of different Facebook pages and just wanted to bring you up to speed this morning on that. Our 12 volt system is now working and uh, we're very thankful for that. And uh, it was actually my wife that found the switch. And I guess I have seen that switch and I'd probably seen it so much I forgot it was there. <laughs> so we'll, uh, we'll update all of you on the uh, little uh, emergency that we had going on yesterday that held us up from leaving Galveston for probably about two hours yesterday. So it was kind of a frustrating day. So we had quite the little drama going on, I guess you'd call it. Yesterday, we didn't have any 12 volt power. And if you have ever had an RV or a camper or anything, there's two separate systems. There's shore power, um, when you plug in, everything runs off of that, your outlets, your air conditioning, your microwave. Um, and then basically your power converter uh, charges your battery and everything else runs on 12 volt. <clears throat> so the 12 volt system is separate from the other system. Yesterday, if we weren't plugged in, we had nothing. So our 12 volt system was not working at all. The batteries were completely charged, so it wasn't that, but there was some kind of disconnect that it wasn't letting the power from the batteries go in to power the 12 volt system. Usually with this camper, <clears throat> all of these lights are LEDs and all that stuff just runs on 12 volt. Um, your water pump runs on 12 volt. A lot of stuff just runs on 12 volt. We had none of that. So we had no lights, we had nothing. We could not figure out for life of us. We spent probably two hours yesterday trying to figure out where the problem was. And this morning, Christina found the disconnect. So there's a disconnect for the battery. If you want to isolate the battery, maybe if the camper's in storage or whatever, so that it, uh, nothing can draw from the battery. There's an actual disconnect in it. And it's in a compartment and it's way up high. And I probably knew it was there at one point and forgot about it. And we were looking and looking and looking. And then this morning we opened up the compartment and she goes, well, what's that right there? And I saw it and it was on, it should have been working. It was in the position where it should have been working, but something must've happened that it, when I turned it off and I turned it back on, I unplugged the camper from the 50 amp plug and then I tried the light and the light worked and then the furnace just happened to kick on all by itself running on 12 volt. We knew then and there that we had found the problem. <laughs> and it was quite the answer to prayer, wasn't it, hon? Yes, it was. Yeah. So our external hard drive with all of our pictures and all of our videos and everything fell in the dog's water last night. <laughs> kind of a freak accident. <laughs> it was hooked to the USB cord. And it fell right directly into the dog's water. I fished it out real quick. It's been sitting on ice for, ice. or ice, rice. Not on ice. Not on ice, on rice, I'm sorry. <clears throat> for what, since about eight o'clock last night, yeah, probably? Yeah, we'll be there at least 24 hours. Yeah, so hopefully we can get that back. So no YouTube video from yesterday. And I was so good, I was gonna put it on the night that everything happened. And I wouldn't have to mess with it this morning. Well, guess what? I still don't have to mess with it this morning. Because it might be non-existent if the external hard drive was ruined. And we're hoping it wasn't because there's a lot of good pictures on there. And uh, a lot of good stuff on there. And we really don't feel like buying another one. So, I guess that's minor compared to our 12-volt system not working. And I called a mobile RV guy yesterday. <laughs> repair guy. <clears throat> he wanted to charge me $150 for the sales call, plus paying mileage, and I don't have I have no idea. We we're in Galveston, I don't even know where he was. And he said he diagnosed it over the phone that our inverter oh the inverter's gone. The inverter's $285. And 
it's going to be this much, this much, and this much. So it could have easily been $500. And you know what the problem really would have been? Is I'll show you. I'm going to stop this video and I'll show you how easily this problem was fixed. Okay. So if you're out there with an RV, don't be so quick to bring it to the RV place or hire one of these mobile guys. And Just get your wife to look at it. And thank you to everybody who gave us some ideas of what might, <laughs> yeah. what it might be because it got us looking in that area. Yeah, we um, thank God for these uh, forums and these pages on Facebook. I started the Toy Hauler uh, fans page. It's called Toy Hauler Fans, and I'm the admin um, for that. Donna Muller is the moderator. And we have almost 3,500 members. Those guys, if you have any problem, they jump on it so quick and will pretty much diagnose, you know, what's wrong with something. And then Full Time RVers has 30,000 members. And those guys were so quick to try to help us out. And I mean, these people are sending you private messages and everything. They'll call you on the phone, <laughs> they'll do whatever it takes to get you going again. So that is worth its weight in gold. Anything is better than having to go to the RV repair place if you can help it. Especially if you're living in your rig. Because what are you going to do? You're going to live in it in the back lot when you wait for your rig to go in. It can be a real problem. So thank God we didn't have to do that this time around. So stay tuned. So here's that battery disconnect switch. And it was in this possession <clears throat> position and nothing was working. So I turned it off and I turned it back on. And that's what it took to basically reset the system. Must be that everything's working now when you're unplugged. And uh, so that was really, you think about it, that was totally going to cut into any boondocking or anything. We wouldn't have had lights. We wouldn't have had water when we pull over on the side of the road. Our refrigerator wouldn't work without 12 volt power, even though it's a gas refrigerator. So there's a lot of things affected if your 12 volt system goes down. So... If you own an RV, figure out where this thing is, become familiar with it, and if you ever have the same problem that we have, it could be as simple as that.